Classic 102.7. This is the Entrepreneurs Network. And right now in the studio with uh, f- with me from Economy is Keith Levenstein. Keith, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, Tony. Good evening again. Uh, we're talking about uh, BEE and compliance and scorecards and so on once again. And in fact, you're j- just about to embark on seminars uh, nationwide, aren't you? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we spend a lot of time on uh, seminars on knowledge, uh, on knowledge management and uh, helping people understand uh, the codes. In this particular case, uh, we're starting on uh, this Thursday that is uh, the 11th of November. Hmm. Uh, we're having a conference uh, at Gallagher State in Johannesburg on uh, procurement and enterprise development. Hmm. Uh, the two elements, procurement and enterprise development, are very closely linked. Uh, the idea of uh, government with BE is to try and ensure that we help create jobs and we help uh, develop small businesses. Uh, developing business, of course, is enterprise development, but how better to help a business grow by supporting him? Hmm. And that is uh, how procur- procurement uh, tends to work. Okay, so it's all day seminars you're doing uh, in Cape Town, in Durban, in obviously in Johannesburg, you that, say? That's correct, it's a full day uh, seminar. It's, uh, it's fairly intensive because uh, there is a lot of uh, work to cover. Mm. Uh, in particular, procurement is a nice one from our viewpoint in that uh, it doesn't cost the company very much money to uh, to get a, a good scorecard on procurement as long as they go along and ask their own supplier for his scorecard. Uh, this is contrary to some of the other elements like socio-economic development where you actually have to spend money like 1% of your net profit after tax. In the case of procurement, it's an admin task and we need to show people during that one-day session how they ask the, their supplier for a scorecard, how to analyze a scorecard and what that scorecard means to their own score because, as you know, uh, if I have a supplier who has a good score, mm. it is going to increase my scorecard and so on. So uh, it becomes quite important that procurement is worth this full 20 points. Okay, it is quite complicated it seems and hence the, the seminars I would imagine. You, you must get all kinds of questions and in fact there may even be big companies that aren't uh, fully compliant or even aware of where they're not compliant. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so often we see companies who produce a scorecard uh, uh, that is either totally non-compliant or they haven't earned the points that they should have uh, earned uh, either on procurement or any of the other elements. Uh, and of course, uh, there's so many mistakes that we unfortunately see being made. Uh, in some cases, I call it mistakes. In other cases, I call it uh, genuine corruption and fronting, in that a company will produce a scorecard that is not intended to be or that is not the correct scorecard mm. for their particular company, for their score. That, uh, in, in other words, uh, I cannot use that scorecard that is given to me. How is it policed if, if uh, there are people out there, even big companies, that are not producing the, the right card? I mean, how is it monitored if you're picking this up because that's your business, you're aware of it? Um, which department, which people, where? I mean, who's policing it? I think that that is a really good question and it's one of the big problems that uh, we have. Obviously, BEE is managed and controlled by the BEE unit of the Department of Trade and in- Industry. Hmm. And uh, they do have a, spe- a specific department that is involved in fronting practices or uh, uh, catching out fronting practices at least. Uh, hmm. But uh, unfortunately, they are overworked and they're too busy so it does to an extent fall to companies like us uh, to look at every single scorecard and the reason I look at scorecards amongst others is I have a database of about 13,000 scorecards that get sent to me from all sorts of companies uh, for which you're very grateful but I've got to look at those scorecards and make a judgment call is the scorecard valid for this particular company and uh, I can give a very general example uh, we received a scorecard from a company uh, a couple of weeks ago as far as we're concerned, and I know they're concerned, they belong to the tourism sector. Mm-hmm. But uh, they produce a scorecard based on the generic codes of good practice. Mm-hmm. Now, you have to wonder why would they not follow the generic codes of good practice? Uh, and it gets even more complicated or uh, more interesting in that their particular verification agency doesn't have accreditation to produce a scorecard based on the tourism sector. So maybe their verification agency said to them, oh, verify you but you must use the codes of good practice mm. and they probably agreed not knowing that it probably isn't in exactly in line with the intention of the codes but now we get to the kicker and that is if they had followed the tourism charter they'd have earned around about five points extra on their scorecard so if they had gone the proper route if they had gone the proper route they would have got uh, a couple of extra points now you have to wonder why did they not do it maybe it is ignorance maybe they didn't understand it um, or whatever other reason and uh, we see so often uh, um, other companies and, and very often this, is, this happens with what is known as a holding company mm-hmm. so you'll have mm-hmm. maybe two operating companies and a holding company the holding company owns the shares of that company but that holding company has no income other than maybe dividends or a very very small management fee 
So you can get a situation where a billion rand company is held by a holding company that has a three million rand turnover, which is simply the dividends or uh, the management fees. And that particular company might produce a scorecard showing them to be an exempt microenterprise okay. and a level four, whereas the actual operating company uh, with a turnover of a billion might be non-compliant or only level eight. And when their customer asks them for a scorecard, they give the scorecard of the holding company. Now, the holding company is genuinely an exempt micro enterprise, but that holding company has absolutely no direct correlation to the operating company that should be should have given the yeah, correct scorecard. It only exists because there's a bigger bigger animal out there that they are looking after the interests of. Absolutely. So, in in, in one respect, we can go along and accuse those companies of fronting. Hmm. In some cases, they would arguably say they weren't aware of it mm. and they thought that they could just use that particular scorecard. Uh, uh, it's now been three years since the codes came out so we would tend to say ignorance of the law is no excuse. Uh, but, that, that, but that does tend to happen and because many companies know that being below five million rand turnover mm. allows you to be called an exempt micro enterprise, they tend to use that as a way of getting around the codes and fronting of course is clearly defined as misrepresenting your B scorecard. In, in the case of this, uh, the tourism company, they misrepresented their scorecard down, which is quite strange. In other cases, we're misrepresenting the scorecard um, in, a, in, in, in the wrong direction and uh, it really means that uh, any of the people who are their suppliers, if they use their scorecard, that their own scorecard does stand at risk of being invalidated itself. Okay. Now, in your seminars, uh, you'll be obviously covering this in more detail because there's a bit more to it than we can cover in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, sure. But just to just go over the, you talk, you talk about the scorecard and then and the codes. Just give us a brief overview of that again. Uh, well, the codes uh, uh, consist of seven elements. Uh, totaling up to 100 points, and it's uh, the intention of every company to strive to get 100 points. Mm. Uh, very few have achieved it, uh, uh, some do, but uh, on average a company will achieve maybe 40 or 50 points, so they've got a long way to go. Mm. Uh, those, those seven elements, of course, is uh, ownership, which is worth about 20 points on the scorecard, and then management, your directors, then uh, employment equity, skills development, uh, procurement, which is worth also 20 points. Enterprise development, helping other companies, is worth uh, also 15 points. And then finally, uh, socio-economic development is uh, worth uh, 5 points. So amongst all those elements, a company can choose which ones to, to start with, mm -hmm. which ones to try and maximize, uh, because we understand that there are some companies, maybe a family-owned company, that currently has no intention of changing its ownership structure um, in whichever way necessary, or maybe it simply doesn't have the budget uh, in today's tough times to spend on, uh, for example, skills development, which we know is incred incredibly important, but if your company isn't about to be making a profit, uh, we can't very well say let's spend mm. a million rand on training our staff who are almost about to lose their jobs. Mm. So yeah. uh, that, 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 that's how the whole scorecard uh, okay. goes along. But uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I'd like to make an offer to uh, our listeners. Sure. Um, the conference that we're holding is on uh, the 11th of uh, November, that is uh, on Thursday, yeah. and uh, I'd like to offer one listener a free complimentary entrance to our conference. Okay. It's a whole day event uh, starting at about uh, 8.30 for 9 o'clock at Gallagher State. So obviously, they need to be in uh, uh, Johannesburg and available on that day. Yeah. If they send an email to info at econobee.co.za with a subject line classic or classic FM. There you go. We will at random choose one person and invite them to come along at no cost. Uh, this is worth around about three and a half thousand rand okay. to your listener. So send that email then to info at econobee.co.za and then uh, well, Keith will be picking one at random from those mails that go through there for the, uh, the event that's happening on Thursday. Well, once again, Keith Livingston from Economy. Thanks very much indeed for being here on the Entrepreneur Network on Classic. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. Join me, Michael Dingan, every Saturday evening for the show Opulent Opera. In this show, we will be exploring some of the world's most fascinating operas written by the likes of Verdi, Wagner, Puccini, as well as our very own Nziligazi Kumar. <laughs>